It's the morning after the big party, and I'm hitting the road. I'm heading south to rural Oaxaca. Unlike Mexico City, the influence here is much more Aztec than Spanish. The Aztecs always celebrated death. Life, they said, is just a dream. Only in death are we truly awake. If there's ever a place where I'll see spirits coming back to Earth, this is going to be it. Today's Day of the Dead is a three-day festival mixing the ancient Aztec traditions with the Catholic All Saints Day. It's very different from the way I've grown up to think about death, which is, well, not to think about it at all. I wonder if celebrating something I prefer to avoid will make it easier to deal with. Catalina? Ah, mucho gusto. Me llamo Stefan. Mucho gusto, mucho gusto. Thank you very much for letting me come and visit you. Look at this place, it's beautiful. I've been invited to spend the festival with Catalina and her family. Is this the, the Virgin of Guadalupe? As yes. This is extraordinary. What, what is this, this room? Nosotros para nuestras visitas está primero Dios y luego nosotros. And this is all, the, all your family? Ah, uh, sí. Uh, ellos son mis papás. Ajá. Uh -huh. La fotografía mía. Is that you? Sí. Is that you? Oh, wow. You have big cheeks then. <laughs> wow, that's, that's the way to have a kitchen. Catalina's mum, Guadalupe, is busy cooking for the Day of the Dead feast. <laughs> Who does all the cooking for Day of the Dead? Is it your mother or is it you? Pues, entre las dos. So has all the, the really tough work already been done or have you got me here to do all the hard work? Uh, yo creo que sí. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Catalina's father, Andres, comes home from work early to help with the preparations. I love your hat. <laughs> it's very cool. Have you just come in from work? Sí. Uh, you've got to give your wife a kiss when you come home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for letting me come and join you. I've been wondering whether they really believe the dead are coming back. Or if the whole thing is mainly an excuse for a big party. So, is everyone looking forward to the Day of the Dead? Pues ya viene su fiesta y a lo mejor viene. Y estamos pues esperando. It's such a huge jump for me because I've never experienced this before. Is there anything that I can do to sort of prepare myself, to, to get myself ready to try and sense um, some of my family that's passed away. Recordar cómo eran tus, los que ya fallecieron y es como celebrar um, el cumpleaños de, de alguien ya fallecido. Hay que hacerles cumpleaños. <laughs> <laughs> Catalina's not the only one who thinks the dead are returning. Whilst in Britain, we tend to associate death with misery, here in Oaxaca, they have a very different outlook. Every night during the festivities, huge parades take place in the city. Here, life is turned upside down. Locals dress up as skeletons, men dress as women, and parties are thrown in graveyards to welcome death. I meet up with Jorge, who helps to organize the festivities. We're celebrating the Day of the Dead, but it's more for the day. I think it's more for the Day of the Lives, because we're having a great party tonight. Day of the Dead seems to be a chance to laugh at death and show you're not afraid. Sit down. Okay. <laughs> I really need to throw my heart and soul into the festivities if I'm going to understand what they're all about. We meet up with Virginia, who's keen to dress us up. 
Virginia dresses me up as Katrina, Day of the Dead's most famous character. She represents a rich old lady, a reminder that even money can't keep us from death. Jorge is also a Katrina, but of a slightly different proportion. The thing is, what happens if I lose you in the crowd? <laughs> No one here seems to think it's bizarre to get dressed up like a dead granny. And I have to admit, it's strangely liberating. I'm not any closer to understanding the true meaning behind Day of the Dead, but this soon feels like the most normal thing in the world. The next morning, I find myself in Oaxaca's largest graveyard. I've come to meet Nora, a local historian, who wants me to meet her relatives. So where are we taking these to? Uh, we got to see grandmother. Actually, the, the, the space was first for grandfather. The grandmother died like uh, three years ago. So what we're doing is uh, we go and I'm bringing some flowers to her tomb. There is a tomb. Uh, this one here? Right here. Wow, it's a whole house. Yeah, <laughs> it's bigger, no? My grandfather and my grandmother is here. Yeah. And you see the pictures right there. We really believe the grandmother, grandfather, and all the people who pass away or pass away and you love it, they're coming back. So actually, they're actually physically coming back? The spirit is what is coming. Is the coming. spirit is coming. The okay. spirit is what is coming back. And that's why we try to prepare all the good food, you know, they love to eat in that time. You know, in Oaxaca, people don't have money for, other th for another things, but for food and for flowers and for the celebration is just, you know, you well, need. You always find some money for that. You're always going to find money for that. Nora understands that the whole idea of Day of the Dead is a bit of a mental leap for me. Eating is central to the whole experience, and she thinks I'll understand it better if I help her make mole. Come on, Stefan, let's go make the mole. We have to prepare this before, you know. Mole is a traditional Oaxacan sauce that's been served since long before the Spanish arrived. So we're gonna make the, your now it's the food of choice for welcoming back the dead. Why mole? Why mole? Well, why not guacamole well, and a few tacos? Uh, <laughs> guacamole and a few tacos is really casual, <laughs> and this is really elegant. This is for a really so this is special, for, a, formal for a really formal occasion. Okay, all the peppers are clean, and I have here guess what? Lard. Lard. Hey. Uh -huh. That's where the flavor this is. This is a poor lard, and this is the most wonderful thing. You don't mess about, do you? That's about three heart attacks you got. Ah, there. you need a lot. This is, really is going to be Day of the Dead. Yes, we need a lot. You see how it turns brown? You're kind of deep frying them in lard. Uh-huh, yeah. that's why you need lots of lard. Look at that, it looks... Wow, oh, smells fantastic. It smells good? Yeah. Does cooking have a spiritual significance for you? Yes, of course. Four years ago, when we cooked for the last time, grandmother and I, she told me she was feeling like she was going to pass away. And she told me that I better learning well and getting the, little, the right point to the, to the mole because she was not going to be with me the next year. The next year, she was not here. But the spirit was here. Mm. She loved to cook, so she was always around checking everything. And to me, this is the, the most closest I can get it to her. So so was she basically saying to you, you better learn this because I want you to cook it for me when I'm, when I'm gone? See, si. basically that's what she said. This is what you need. Exactly like that's this. Okay? That like that. It's, it looks okay. like mud. Like moth. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not <laughs> bueno que el mud. <laughs> The mole already seems like a coronary waiting to happen. So what does Nora do? 
She adds chocolate, an Aztec favorite. This is going to be rich, rich, rich. You want to taste it now? Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It tastes really smoky and thick and kind of meaty and oh, just a really deep, deep, deep flavor. Look at that. It's outrageous. The mole is just a sauce. You can add anything to it. But the most popular ingredient is chicken. OK, let's That's go bring it. a plate. OK? Hey, Hello. Sorry, to grandmother. Si, mm. to grandmother. Ooh -hoo. So am I experiencing a little bit of, of your grandmother here? Of course. You feel like she's right here checking our, checking our faces and see how much we like it. <laughs> I can't help noticing Nora's sister Lorena is overcome with emotion. The smell and taste of her grandmother's favorite feast is making the memories come flooding back. Why are you crying? Because ¿Por qué lloras? Is, is, the, is the memory of, you, of your grandmother a, 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 a good thing? All this is her. But is, is, this, is this a good thing or is this a sad thing? Es lo bueno o es mal? Es bueno. Es muy bueno. Está aquí conmigo, pegadita. Oh, you're making me feel all, all upset now as well. Yeah, that's, that's the feeling. And that's why all this. Yeah. That's why the day of the day. Early the next morning, I'm back at Catalina's for day two of the festival. This is the day when those who died as children return. All across Mexico, people are in their homes, tending their altars and waiting for the dead infants to arrive. I'm not a particularly sort of sentimental person, I don't think, and I don't believe in ghosts. But um, there is a, a, a huge sense of a, of a build-up to something, and, it, and it's these sensual things, foods and smells and, and sounds, um, and the, the idea of being here where people truly believe that the dead are coming back, and I'm wondering if it's beginning to carry me along. The, the big difference is everyone here is really excited and happy, and I'm feeling um, tense and a little bit frightened. Um, this is an interesting situation. Um, Catalina has said that she wants to interview me and ask me a few questions, which is a bit of a relief, really, because um, it takes the pressure off me. Um, what did you want to ask me? Estefan, necesito que cierres los ojos. Ahora imagina que el familiar que más quieres ha fallecido. ¿Qué sientes? I can't, I can't imagine that. I can't imagine it. Yo ya lo pasé. Um, la persona que más amé en esta vida fue a mi abuelo. Um, añoras a la persona y necesitas verlo otra vez. Así me, así me pasa a mí. Is he on his way here now? Sí. Él ya viene en camino. Catalina's determined to get beneath the skin of my English reserve. ¿Cómo es tu familia allá? In one, one really interesting thing that I've, I've been thinking about um, for the Day of the Dead is that uh, my father never knew his father because um, he died in World War II and he didn't even know um, that, that that was his real father. He, um, he thought that his father was the man that his mother married after, his, after her first husband died. And I, I never knew, obviously this guy's my grandfather, and I never knew him, I've, I've never pictured him, I always thought somebody else was my grandfather. So it's a really strange time, and I don't want to get all sort of hocus-pocus therapeutic about it, but I kind of thought that, that going through the Day of the Dead and being able to concentrate on this, this guy that I've never really thought about before as my grandfather um, might help me understand it a little bit better, maybe understand my dad a little bit better. Yeah, uh, te pasa lo mismo con, con mi bisabuela, ya no la conocí. No tengo una fotografía real de ella, pero solo bastan las palabras de amor que me hablan de ella para para volverla a sentir otra vez. The other person that that I'm very keen on trying to focus on um, on the day of the dead itself is my wife's um, mum, who died when my wife was 16, just a couple of days after her 16th birthday, who I also never knew, but I'm so thankful for um, for you know for my wife and for you know. 
grandmother of my, of my children. Are you, are you feeling okay? Are you, are you okay now? Sí. With three hours to go before the dead come back, the altars are stacked high with food. Why do you put food on the altar? El altar tiene un gran significado acá en, en el pueblo. Este plano que estamos el, poniendo significa la vida, la abundancia, lo que da la tierra y lo que nuestros seres queridos este, comían y disfrutaban cuando ellos estaban en vida. Así que por eso le estamos ofreciendo lo mejor, lo, la mejor fruta de la temporada. This room now smells so strongly of, of all these flowers. Um, the food all being here is, is such a strange thing to, to see all this edible stuff. It's, it's an incredibly sensual experience already that the incense is, is, is being prepared and things like that. So it is an earthly sensation that should drive you into feeling a, a certain way and maybe, maybe feeling that the dead are coming back. Um, but it's still, a, it's still a big jump for me to make. It's three o'clock. We're about to receive the souls of dead children. Catalina's family have never lost any infants, but they'll be receiving the souls of kids who don't have any family left alive to remember them. Andres prepares the room as the local church bells ring to let everyone in the town know that the dead are on their way. Do you have a sensation of them being here now? Sí. Ellos ya están aquí. Ellos están entrando. ¿Viste el aire que se formó? ¿Y viste que el incienso se movió? En ese momento entraron ellos. Just after the bells started ringing, there was a big rush of air outside and the incense poured out of out of the room here. Así es. Es como si una persona entrara. Um, En vida, así lo mismo sucedió ahorita. El aire movió. Ellos están aquí. Ok. <laughs> so, did I have the same experience that, that they did and, and think that the souls of the dead were coming in? No, I didn't. But did I have some kind of spiritual journey? Of course I did. Um, I was concentrating so much on the idea that the children had died and that and the, the, their lives are worth celebrating. And so, yes, you do get some sort of sensation that the dead are here with us. As night falls, we head towards the graveyard. Looking forward to, to seeing the cemetery. We're going to decorate the tomb that holds several of Catalina's family, including her beloved great-grandmother. Everyone else from the village is here decorating their ancestors' tombs with flowers and candles. They'll be keeping a vigil all night. Bendita eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. Santa María. Soon the local Catholic Church joins in the ancient Aztec festivities. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado. It's traditional to sing and play music for the spirits, inviting them back to earth. Everyone wants to make sure the dead feel welcome. I'm beginning to understand how it's possible to celebrate death. But I want to know if Catalina really isn't afraid of dying. If you knew you were going to die tomorrow, would you still see death as something that's funny? Sí, es mucho más fácil. Todos somos seres humanos. Y la vida es corta. La vida eterna es la verdadera vida. Cut 
for mezcal. So, uh, salut. So, we're now having a party. Um, a party, uh, an alcohol party in a graveyard. After eight hours, it's time to head home. Well, the graveyard's pretty much empty now. There's a couple of mariachis still singing here. Um, and we're on our way home. It's been freezing cold, so we've been warmed up nicely by a skin full of mezcal. Um, it's been quite a revelation. I've never, never seen death as being such a positive, kind of happy experience before. So um, oh, I, feel, I feel really exhilarated by, by all of this. Here we are. Night Night to the Dead. It's a way to say goodbye, isn't it? But my excitement is short-lived. Catalina's determined to get me closer to the dead than I ever anticipated. I'm, I'm not much of a superstitious person. But this is what I can see from my bed. Well, it's eight o'clock here in the Room of Doom, but it, it hasn't been a kind of a traumatic night. I have, it has started to sink into me that the memory of your dead relatives and, the, and your dead loved ones um, doesn't need to be mournful. It, it can be exciting and it can be happy. Today is day three when the spirits of adult relatives return. After all this immersing myself in death, I'm beginning to feel more receptive to the idea of them actually coming back. I wonder if I might be able to get in touch with my own dead family, or if it's all still a little out of my reach. Catalina is busy putting photographs of the people she loves most on the altar. And who are these? Él es mi bisabuelo. Él se llamaba Carlos. It's a real Wild West sort of photo, isn't it? Sí. Beautiful. How would you feel if I put um, a couple of photos of mine on here? Would that be appropriate? Las almas no solamente es en, una so en un solo lugar, sino creo yo que en todos lados están. Es universal. Adelante. How will I know if they're here? Tu corazón te lo dice. So, Catalina, I, one photo of my, um, my wife's mother, um, who I never met, and who, she died when my wife was 16. Um, but my grandfather, I, we didn't know that he was my grandfather until very recently, so I've just got an entry in, in the, the um, birth register. Do you think that's okay? Claro, adelante, donde gustes. I think they would they probably like the flowers. I think George's mum would like the flowers. It's quite an emotional idea to do. But it's all right if I sit down for a minute. <laughs> Ahora que quisieras platicarles a ellos que están aquí. What a strange idea. Um, uh, I'd like to tell Juliet I'm very thankful for Georgia, my wife, and that um, I know Georgia loves her enormously, and it was such a tragedy that she uh, she died when my wife was 16. Um, and. I so wish that I'd met her. Pues entonces ella ya lo sabe. And and I guess for my grandfather, um, <laughs> uh, I don't want this to seem really sentimental and silly. Oh dear me! <laughs> I'm not really used to doing this. 
Um, but I wish my my uh, grandfather knew that uh, he had a son that he um, that my father was alive because he did he never knew that um, he had a son um, and. Until literally a couple of years ago, I'd never even thought of, of, of somebody else as being my grandfather. So it's a, um, it's an incredible feeling to, to just sit and concentrate on it for a minute and to think about somebody that, um, somebody that was part of my family that I never knew. Ten por seguro que él lo sabe. Y ten por seguro que él ahora está aquí. Y que ahora conoce a un nieto. Look what you've done to me. I'm a mess. <laughs> ah, it's quite nice. I've never, I've never, um, I've never uh, cried about them before, um, and it's quite. Uh, it's, they've always. It's always seemed like a horrible sadness, but it is quite uplifting to um, finally sit and concentrate on them and and think about them. It's sort of cleansing in a way. Team. <laughs> Te entiendo. Es lo mismo que estoy sintiendo yo. Esas campanadas anuncian que están con nosotros. I never saw the spirits of Reginald Gates or Juliet Glyn Smith. But much as I hate superstition, to say I didn't feel their presence wouldn't be entirely true. I'm reluctant to say it, but yes, in a strange way, I did meet the dead. Finally, it's time to prepare the Feast of the Dead. Here, it's platter tamale, a corn and tomato-based dish that Oaxacans have been making for centuries. Guadalupe and Catalina are clearly not used to seeing a man in the kitchen. Ow. <laughs> The first plate of the feast goes to their most distinguished guests, the visiting dead. I can imagine that Reginald Gates never tried pleta tamal. I think they'd like that. Before the living guests can eat, everyone gathers in the altar room one last time. To the sound of fireworks all across Mexico, it's time to say goodbye for another year. And that's a fundamental change to my way of thinking. You don't just acknowledge the dead once, you can look forward to their return as long as you live. As head of the house, Andres helps the dead back on their return journey. How, how do you feel about them leaving? Triste, pero con la esperanza de que el año que viene van a regresar. Yeah, I think so too. El año que viene vas a estar acordándote que ellos llegan este día. It's going. <laughs> I'd made an extraordinary connection that I'd never felt before. But stepping out of the altar room and into the sunlight for a beer didn't in any way feel strange. It felt exhilarating. And that seems to be the point of Day of the Dead. It's both tragic and celebratory. It's been an incredible, life-changing experience. I never expected the intensity of a celebration could bring me closer to my own family and even help me understand my own mortality. Maybe when you celebrate death, like Catalina's family do, grief is slightly easier to bear.